House of Horrors. They said, go and see the Waltons, and I thought, you know, John Boy and all that, but it's nothing like that at all. At this Walton house, you're never sure who or what is going to pop up next. Vampires, gargoyles, witches, and worse. It's all the work of Chris Walton, who's travelled the world looking for just the right props to make people jump. Like all uh, good obsessions, they, you don't really know it is an obsession. Uh, it kind of starts slowly at first. It was just a party for some friends and family. That was 10 years ago. Every year since, it's got bigger and badder. Some of it rather too gruesome for the faint hearted. It's all about reactions. It's about you know how people react to the different rooms that they're in, and uh, you know, you know, fear is a great sense to you know to, to spur on. And I like to see how people react to that. It's really it's quite funny actually sometimes. At Halloween, it takes over the family home, which is all right if you like ghouls, ghosts, and all things gruesome. I actually prefer Christmas. When he tends to get a hobby, he kind of sticks at it for a while and then moves on to the next one. Um, but in terms of the research that he goes through, he'll watch horror movies all night long to see, yeah, I want that prop, it look good, that would make people jump. So yeah, his obsessions tend to go a little too far, but it's all for good cause. <laughs> and that good cause this year is cancer research. The hope is the frights will raise a scary amount of money, with those brave enough to take a tour, encouraged to make a donation. Wow, Chris Wilson and his daughter Frankie join us now. Morning. 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 How long does it take to get it all ready? It takes about two weeks to set it all up, uh, but to actually build the props, it takes most of the year. We're starting February normally. And it involves quite a bit of investigation, because you go over to the States, don't you, for some we, ideas? Yeah, we do, yes. Um, we head over to the Halloween Fair in St. Louis, Missouri, and spend some time there to look at what's happening in the US. So, Frankie, did this happen over a period of time? When, 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 why did you... The first year you did it, presumably, it wasn't so big, and it's just escalated, has it? Yeah, it basically started five years ago from a Halloween party. My dad's always had a passion for Halloween, and we always said, get some family and friends together, and then it turned out, our neighbours said, this is amazing, why don't you open it as an open house? And we was like, um, we'll give it a go, and five years on, we've actually never looked back, so... And how scary... Can you go? Because we, we warned, we, we gave a, a warning to some of our younger viewers there. I mean, because you, you've got to get that balance right, haven't you? It's really, it's really difficult um, to just figure out what the right balance is. But our kids these days are incredibly resilient. It's sort of some of the younger adults that are uh, not as resilient anymore. You know, a lot of people have got fear of clowns and things like that. Uh, so we have to just, just get the balance. And tell us about the, the fundraising part of this. Tell us a bit about that. I'm going to say this year I decided. Um, to kind of sort the media out, if you will. Um, if anyone had an email address, a phone number, I tried to contact them to try and get the word out a bit about this because it's for charity. Um, I got in touch with the local mayor's office that we found out only lived 10 minutes away. So he actually came down and cut the caution tape as the ribbon, as you will. Um, we had leaflets, we've had Facebook groups, everything we can possibly just to say, this event needs to be seen because it's for cancer research. We want to raise as much money as we can. I was going to say, so the pressure now <laughs> is to get bigger and better each year, is, yep. isn't it? Or did you feel that? Well, we've had a, it's been a step change this year because we moved away from sort of traditional mechanical props, the things that are more pneumatic and air-powered, things that you don't tend to see in the UK. Uh, so that was uh, the people had been in the house so far last night, and, and we had almost 900 visitors last night. So you 900 in <laughs> one evening? 900 in one evening, <laughs> yes. Um, wow. They, I mean, we had such such good uh, feedback from everybody that went through, and yeah, we only had two or three people that were too scared to go in. And like I say, it's normally the slightly younger adults that are, and and guys as well. You know, everyone think oh, it's going to be the girls that are like, no, absolutely not. Those are younger guys. <laughs> and are you a family that is kind of otherwise fascinated by all things horror? I think you alluded to that <laughs> in the in the, the film we saw a little earlier on. Yeah, my my dad and his girlfriend love anything horror related. They will sit in their conservatory and watch horror movies all year long, whereas I would much prefer a good Disney film all the time. Don't like anything that makes me jump normally, apart from this. Well, good luck. Good luck this year. Um, clearly, people are already find it fascinating. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much, Colin. Tell us about it. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, do stay with us. We'll have a news summary in a few moments.